Hey guys, it's Neil again from Heart of Texas Armory, and today I want to bring you guys a video review on what I think is probably the most unique watch I've ever taken a look at on my channel. So join me today and find out my complete thoughts on this really cool and unique diver from Seiko, the Seiko Gijario Design SBEE001. So this watch I received in on loan from Aaron at the OFD channel. So shout out to Aaron over there. I appreciate that brother for sending this over so I can show my audience this really cool and unique piece. And like I mentioned in the intro, this watch is a Giugiaro design watch. And Giorgetto Giugiaro is an Italian automobile designer and he has worked on quite a few really cool vehicles in the past. So Volkswagen, Lotus, DeLorean, and I believe Maserati to name a few. And all his designs are very unique and he has a history with Seiko as well. So if you guys are old enough like me to remember the Aliens movies that came out in the 80s, he actually designed the watch that Ripley wore on her wrist. So that watch you can see on screen right now, definitely a very unique design. And they actually came out with a re-release of that recently too, you should look up. But this one here is a new design. You, you can see it has some similar design cues, but it is a new design here. So designed from the ground up by Giorgetto Giugiaro for Seiko, this watch is definitely an eye catcher. So taking a look at the specs here of the SBEE001, we'll start off with dimensions here. So the bezel diameter here is right at 40 millimeters, which is a really great size. The watch does have a polymer shroud here. You can see that right there, similar to a tuna, but it's its own unique design. If you measure from the exterior of the shroud from that point there to this point right over here, comes out to about 44 millimeters. Lug to lug is fairly short at 48 millimeters. The thickness on this watch is 11.5 millimeters, so it wears really nice on the wrist. We do have a unique lug design. You can see how the strap attaches to this watch, but if you do measure the lug width here, you come out to around 17 millimeters. So this is a very unique strap size here. The construction of this watch is stainless steel, although it does have a nice bead blasted finish here. Almost reminds me of a titanium watch the way it looks, but it is stainless steel construction. The weight on the watch on the strap is 88 grams, so it wears nice and light on the wrist, but it still has enough weight that it doesn't feel like a toy. This is a Seiko dive watch and it is a air diver. So this is pretty much ISO certified. You're gonna be able to take this pretty much anywhere in the water. You could even take it scuba diving if you really wanted to, although I wouldn't recommend this since this is a limited edition, but if you wanted to, it could certainly handle it. And we do have a Hardlex crystal here. It has a slight dome, as you can see right there. Really nice, adds a little bit of character to the dial when you look at it at certain angles, but I like that it's not so pronounced that it affects legibility. The quartz movement inside this watch is a 7N36 and expect to get about two to three years of battery life on this particular quartz movement. It's an entry level Seiko quartz movement, but it's going to keep great time, be very accurate, reliable and durable. And this watch of course is a limited edition out of 2000 and they are individually numbered. So this watch here is number 1587 out of 2000. So having the watches individually numbered does add to the collectability of this watch. Take a look at the construction and design of this watch. Just a quick glance, you can definitely tell that, that this is a one-of-a-kind design. I've certainly never seen any watch that looks similar to this, so I really like that it is so unique. But even though the design is so out there in regards to most other dive watches on the market, it does wear beautifully on the wrist, and it's actually very comfortable. And the main reason for that is that this watch here is built off-center. So you can see the strap here is located on the right-hand side of the watch while the crown is located on the left hand side. So when you wear it on your wrist and you bend your wrist up like this, you don't get any type of crown bite at all or any pressure because that right hand side of course is completely absent of any type of crown. The finishing here is a nice bead blasted finish which I think is very beautiful and actually looks really good with the color combination as well as that black polymer here, that shroud. And the overall aesthetics, although very unique, are pretty pleasing at least to my eyes. So I like this dark, deep blue color on the dial, and in certain lights, it's almost more of a purple, but I really like it, and it definitely adds to the visual impact of this watch. The bezel design is one of my favorite aspects of this watch. You can see it is a traditional die style bezel, and the bezel is unidirectional with 120 clicks, and the feel when actually rotating the bezel is similar to most other Seiko dive watches. So if you're familiar with the feel of an SKX, that's what this feels like here in regards to the clicks. But what I'm a big fan of is the actual design of the bezel teeth here. So this design here is one of my favorites I've ever seen on a Seiko watch. It's so easy to grab. It gives you really good grip, but it's not sharp enough that it actually hurts to grab onto this bezel. It just gives you a rock solid grip and it just adds to the overall feel of the bezel action. 
And similar to the bezel here, the grip on the crown is excellent as well. So very easy to operate this crown, although it is a little odd to use a crown on the left-hand side of the watch, but with a little practice, it's not too bad. Flipping the watch over to take a look at the case back, you'll see that there's quite a bit of information engraved onto this watch. So it's gonna have all the information relevant to the watch in regards to the water resistance, the movement type, as well as right here, you can see the marks for the years, where if you take this watch into a watchmaker, he'll most likely take a little punch and make a little mark on the year that he changed the battery at. Being a Seiko diver, we do get the Seiko Tsunami right there in the center, just like pretty much every other Seiko dive watch. But there are a couple other unique things here I'll point out. So one is the individually numbered section here. Again, this is a limited edition watch out of 2000. So you can see the number right there. And then the other thing I'll point out is the unique Jujario Designs logo right there engraved onto the case back as well. So to wrap this video review up, we'll go ahead and go over some of the positives and negatives. So starting off with the positives, the first thing I'll mention is just the overall unique design. You're not really gonna find another watch similar to this unless it's another Jujario designed watch, but the unique looks here are super cool, kind of a throwback to that 1980s Aliens watch, but with some modern touches. And of course, this is a dive watch, which is always nice as well. I also like the overall dimensions on this watch. So we do have a 40 millimeter bezel diameter. And then if you include the shroud here, 44 millimeters, and then we have a fairly compact lug to lug of 48 millimeters. So this watch is gonna wear just fine on pretty much anyone's wrist size. My wrist is six and seven eighths, and I think it wears beautifully. And being a Seiko dive watch, it's very easy to read the time on this watch. I like that it's so legible. I really like the color choices here. So you got the black bezel, the blue dial, and the bead blasted case. So to me, the color combinations and case finishes here really blend together into a beautiful package overall. And this watch is full of Seiko Lumabrite, so you know the Luma is going to be spectacular. You can see this watch here glows like a torch, so you're not going to have any problems using this watch in low light situations. And the last positive I'll mention here is that this watch is a limited edition release, so it is quite collectible and the value should continue to go up for these or at least hold steady. It's not going to lose value. And as far as I know, Seiko is not going to be making any more of these. So the initial 2000 that were produced are going to be the only ones available. As for the negatives, there's just a couple of things. So the first thing I'll mention is just the feel on the wrist. So having a watch that's off center like this is just an odd feeling, particularly if you're used to just wearing standard watches. So I never really got used to the feeling of having that watch off center. It just felt weird having the weight on the left-hand side of my wrist when I'm used to having it more centered. I'm sure if I wore this watch for a longer period of time, I would get used to it, but, but I'm still gonna mention that as a negative because every time you put this on your wrist, it just feels a bit odd. The other thing with the offset design is the crown here. So it's just a little bit more awkward to operate the crown when you're wearing the watch on wrist because we're all used to using crowns that are on the right hand side. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to that left handed crown. But overall, it's not a huge negative. It's just something I'm going to mention to you guys. And of course, having the proprietary lugs, you're pretty much locked into the strap that came on the watch. So I'm going to list that as a negative too, because you're not going to be able to find aftermarket straps for this particular watch. You're pretty much stuck with the one it came with from the factory. But in the end here, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a super cool and unique timepiece that I really am happy that I got the chance to take a look at here. So once again, I wanna get a shout out to Aaron at the OFD channel. I really appreciate the opportunity to take a look at this piece. And even though this watch is a bit polarizing because of the overall unique design here, it is a watch I definitely recommend, particularly if any of you guys find the design appealing. And you have to remember that this watch is also a limited release. So the collectability and the price on this timepiece should go up in the future. Guys, if you have any questions or comments on this timepiece, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.